Let's talk about animated visual storytelling using AI-generated art. We're going to get your story off the page, get your characters out of those panels, and get them into an animated world. Now, I'm not talking about AI-generated animations. I'm talking about making animations using AI-generated art. There's a difference there. Let's take a look. Welcome to Camp Peculiar. My name is Aaron, and this is a channel dedicated to visual storytelling using AI art. Today, I'm taking you on an introductory, sort of an overview of how to take your animated AI art or your comic strip and turn it into an animation short. We're talking about what software to use and more importantly, what software to not use. My general workflow, things to think about when you're doing it. About a week ago, I made an AI art animated short called Lone Star, which was about a cactus pun battle out in the desert, a showdown, if you will, centered around cactus puns. It was made with 100% AI art other than some particle effects and then a little script I wrote to throw the tumbleweeds out into the desert. It was 100% AI art, and I think it is a fantastic time to be thinking about taking your AI comic or your AI generated art and getting it into an animated form for you. The ability to get a character that can be sliced up or at least isolated is there. The backgrounds are 100% there. Um, As long as we keep in mind one thing. I'm talking about 2D animation or what's sometimes called 2.5D animation or 2D images in a 3D environment. And I'll talk a little bit more about the styles of animation that you can sort of choose from or the more the the technical processes, how your animated character is set up. I'll talk about that more in the middle or later part of this video. For now, let's talk about software first. You got four different categories of software that you could choose from. I'm going to start with the easiest one. You could use something like Adobe Premiere or any other non-linear video editor that supports keyframing of any kind. I've done a video on this channel about one workflow for animating a comic using Premiere, but there's a lot more that you could do with it that I didn't cover in this video. Where I think Premiere excels is that it's easy to use, it's relatively quick, a lot of people already have the skills to sort of cut up video timelines and things like that, and there's a lot of training on Premiere available. Premiere doesn't have a 3D camera, and it doesn't have a bones system for attaching your 2D images to like skeletal systems or anything like that. It does come with a number of built-in video effects, and a lot of those can be used to get great results. My suggestion, if you're going to use Premiere, and I'm happy to do a whole video on this, is to use something that I've coined, uh, I'll call it the, the sequences as animation clips, which means I wouldn't attack an animated project in Premiere, an AI art animated project in Premiere, by just putting your assets on the main sequence timeline and keyframing them as you go. I think that would yield a, a, a complicated and messy result at the end. I would be more in favor of creating all the animation clips you think you're going to need, running, walking, standing, breathing, idle, uh, whatever it is your piece calls for creating those as their own sequences in Premiere and then just dragging those sequences as if they were animation clips onto the main timeline. The second category of software would be an effects package and the most popular one is After Effects. I've done several After Effects comic sort of things for this channel and I've been using it for a long time so it's like a natural thing to pick up and be like oh you can animate stuff in After Effects so this must be the right piece of software to use. And here's where there might be a moment of conflict or controversy or at least disagreement. In my personal opinion, I feel that After Effects has not aged well. The timeline, the way that it's set up feels clunky, it feels slow, the way that you parent objects, it all just feels a little dated, a little clunky, and a little bit slow, especially compared to the other packages I'm going to talk about in this video. With that said, After Effects is an okay choice and it does work. It has a 3D camera and it also has a bones system in it. So it's built to do these kinds of things. And if you're familiar with it and you have a computer that can run it, it can be a great choice. The third category would be a dedicated 2D animation program, and there's actually a lot of these out there. If you're already in the Adobe workflow, then Adobe Animate CC, or what used to be called Adobe Flash, is a great choice for bringing in AI art that's either cut up or not cut up, animating your sequences there, animating your clips there, exporting them out as video, and then bringing them into Premiere to assemble them there. Anime CC doesn't have really a 3D camera, but it does have bones and a number of different ways that you can animate things. 
And there's other options outside of Adobe and the Animate CC environment as well. There is Toon Boom Harmony, which has a subscription option to it. It's a little bit expensive, definitely overkill, uh, but a lot of studios use it. And so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. Spine 2D has a little bit of a learning curve, is another great choice. Uh, seems to be used mostly in the video game crowd. There is a program called Moho, which you can check out. Uh, and then there's Blender. Blender is a 3D open source package with a fairly steep learning curve. There's a ton of videos. It's not that bad, but it does have a learning curve. But Blender's 2D support seems to get better and better with every release. And it's actually really good right now. Like I've rigged up AI characters in Blender using their bone system or using just pivot point animation, and it works really good. So let's talk about those styles of animation now. Like what are you going to be doing? You're obviously not going to be hand drawing animation. So what are you going to be doing? And there's three sort of techniques to animating an AI generated 2D piece of art. The first one we'll call the bone method or the bone mesh warp method. This method works by you taking a intact 2D image. It's not cut up. It's an intact but isolated image. You bring it into the program and you draw out a, a bone structure for the legs, the arms, the torso and all that. So then the program puts a mesh warp on top of that image, and then you connect the points of that mesh warp to the skeleton so that when you rotate the bone, it rotates or sort of warps a section of your image. After the bone mesh warp technique would be the bone non mesh warp technique, and that is using a cut up model. So a model where the the hands, arms, forearms, you know, legs, feet, everything has been sliced up in Photoshop or some other editing application. You bring it into the program and then you still draw out bones, but you're just attaching those images to various bone places so that you can rotate the bones and it will just rotate the hand part or the forearm part or something like that. And so the last step is to get rid of the bones altogether. When you're animating an AI art character that's been sliced up in the feet, the legs and all that, there's not really a huge reason to use bones unless the system is easier to keyframe with those bones. At that point in time, you can just move the pivot point of each section of the character's body uh, to where the joint would be, and then the body will rotate around that pivot point as if there were a bone there. That last method of animating the no bones pivot point style of animation is really like just taking a, a character and cutting it out of construction paper, cutting all the different body parts out of construction paper, and then using those brass tacks or those brass brads to sort of create joints everywhere. So it's kind of like a stop motion character in a software program. So if I were going to choose this third category of 2D specific software, uh, I would ironically put Blender first just because I'm familiar with it. Even though it is a 3D program, its 2D tools are really good. Or I would probably pick Flash because I know animate. I would pick animate uh, because I'm familiar with that as well. And all I'm looking to do is just get some clips of animation that I can use to support my story and get those into Premiere so that I can assemble them and reuse them over and over again to sort of tell the story. The fourth option is to use a modern 3D game engine like Unity or Unreal. Unity is free and has every tool that we've sort of talked about so far inside of it, and it's what I used to make Lone Star. Unreal, the other game engine I mentioned, has been used on several TV shows for its real-time rendering ability. It can do a lot of the things, if not all the things that Unity can do. It's just a little bit bigger, a little bit more robust of a game engine. So if you're thinking about using a game engine, you don't know either of them, I would definitely start with Unity. And don't let the game engine part of it scare you or anything like that. Working in Unity is really very easy, especially compared to Blender or After Effects especially. It does have a learning curve, which I am happy to go over. But once you get over that, you so once you get past that learning curve, you get a lot of neat things for free. First, you get all the other things I've talked about. It has an animation editor and builder and a bone system and a mesh warp system. It has all that stuff embedded in it, and it's really easy to use. You're also going to get shadows and things like that done for you as you build your set. And it really is easy to import the art, put it on the stage, and kind of move it around. But the two biggest benefits to using Unity are the ability to create the clips of animation and reuse them on different characters uh, and call them up whenever you need them, and the camera system. Unity has a package inside of it called Cinema Machine. Cinema Machine is really good at doing cinematic camera movements with very little effort on the user's part. It just kind of works. The camera knows how to move from location to location, uh, and I used it heavily, extensively on Lone Star to get every single one of those camera movements. So real quick, my workflow is to start in mid-journey, and then you have to ask yourself a really important question first. Is this kind of just a one-shot of a character where you know the pose that you want them to be in, and you're going to only animate sort of that pose kind of happening start to finish? If that's the case where you know the pose you want your character in and you're only looking to add a little bit of motion or movement to that pose, 
I usually go with a prompt that sounds like character description, then pose description, then additional details, then the words clean, no background, and then the style information. If you don't know the pose, you want something more flexible or that you can do more types of animated clips with, then I usually go character description, then standing tall, arms stretched out, or arms held out to both sides, and then again, clean, no background. This pose in rigging language is sometimes called a T-pose or a reference pose or a bind pose. If your plan is to cut out all the different body parts so you can do pivot point uh, animation, you're probably going to run into some issues here next to where the backside sort of lat is and where the inner thigh is. If you're going to do cutout animation, uh, you'll probably need to fill these in or do some sort of like photo bashing to get these parts cleaned up so there aren't huge gaps in anatomy. I then take it into Photoshop, just kind of clean it up, bring it right into Unity. And honestly, Unity is rigging and skin weighting. Skin weighting is where you control the amount of influence the bones have on particular areas of the mesh warp. It's so good that there really isn't a need for me to cut up the models in Photoshop anymore. So what's next? I really think that generating an AI character or characters that you want to tell a story with and then bringing them into Premiere after you've cut them up in Photoshop or whatever program you want to use to do that. I think that's a good place to start. And then when you're in Premiere, just building a couple of really basic animation clips, maybe just a breathe cycle or just an arm raise or something to accent a bit of your comic panel. I think those things are pretty achievable and I'm happy to do demonstrations of any of that process. After that, or if you're already sort of comfortable with Premiere or you just kind of want to jump into the game engine thing, I think that is probably the future. Uh, game engines are so much more than just about making video games now. They, they are content sort of environments, content authoring environments and experience authoring environments. And Unity is free to download, to install. There's tons and tons of videos on them. Most of them are going to be about game development, which you're not going to be interested in because we're only using a really small subset of what Unity is capable of. And that is like its cuts scene basically tools. The tools you would use to make a cutscene in a video game is kind of what we're talking about. We're just going to get rid of the video game and just do the cutscenes. So I hope you found that overview helpful and or at least interesting of where things are at and where they're going. Again, I'm happy to do sort of demonstrations or tutorials on those. Leave a comment down below on what you're working on, uh, what you would like to see, what you're interested in. I'd be happy to respond to that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Camp Peculiar. And I will see you next time at that camp I just mentioned, Camp Peculiar, because that's the name of the channel. I don't know. It's, it's the end of the video.